Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here back with your daily crypto news and analysis. And today we're going to be talking about Ripple and XRP. So sit back, relax, and before we fully jump on into this video, I do just want to ask guys could please leave a like on this video. It does help the channel grow immensely. And of course, I always do greatly appreciate it. Now, overall, the prices throughout the entire market are sitting pretty stable for the most part. Um, I have been watching a few altcoins for the most part on the 24-hour span. We are still seeing Zilliqa absolutely smashing through levels. Uh, we hit some pretty big highs today, but we are up 317% on the 7-day span. Like I said, you know, the next major target for this was 17 and a half cents. We broke out of that and smashed it today uh, and we ran all the way to like 21 cents. I think that this is clearly on a path to the all time high and this is soon to be into price discovery where we will see the ultimate price per Zill uh, being targeted, which will most likely be into the dollar plus range. Now, while we are seeing, you know, all coins smashing targets. I am awaiting XRP's major move, which will most likely happen during the last 10% of the bull run, similar to the 2017-2018, uh, you know, overall chart. Um, but when we are talking about things happening within this entire market, um, the structure of the 2017-2018 bull run is sort of similar to the market that we are in now. Um, but there's a lot of factors that are really kind of leading up to a massive run throughout the entire market. But ultimately, I want to talk to you guys about XRP's overall adoption and things happening rapidly within this space. So first off, we do see Ripple reports 130% yearly basis growth in Asia Pacific transactions amid emerging use cases. If you guys did miss this, I thought this was a pretty significant article that really kind of touched base on some exciting things. First off, we do see here, here is yesterday's interview in Token Post of Brooks and Twistle, Ripple's VP of APAC, kind of, you know, boilerplate noting NFT CBDCs on demand liquidity slash, you know, LOC or line of credit and the crypto hub does also notes 130% transaction growth year over year and emerging use cases like trade flow or treasury finance. There's a lot of use cases coming to the Ripple net, and uh, I'm just so excited to see what ones actually utilize XRP. We know on-demand liquidity and line of credit are ones that really kind of specifically focus on XRP as a major demand. Um, but of course you do see, you know, a large amount of growth within that APOC region, uh, specifically around those, you know, 250 plus banks. There's 20% of them uh, that are, of course, you know, located within that Asia Pacific zone. Uh, so you know, pay attention to this. And I, I really do think that this is something that's fairly significant as well. Now, we do see the APOC region or area struggled with a lack of awareness of the blockchain technology that supports crypto digital payments in the past. Reports over the last several years, however, have highlighted an increase in crypto usage with the worldwide blockchain market expected to grow at an 81% CAGR compound annual growth rate over the next five years, reaching $23.3 billion by 2023. Cross-border payments were the most popular use case for blockchain technology in 2021, accounting for 15.9% of all use cases globally, which it is 100. 56 trillion dollar market so why wouldn't it now i do want to also talk to you guys about this that was posted yesterday by ripple they said the crypto landscape is constantly evolving and the next evolution of crypto for business is upon us learn why ripple with our experience industry savvy and technical resources will deliver the most trusted solutions now this is of course the next major stepping stone for crypto uh, right now we are seeing cryptocurrencies being adopted at a massive rate we are seeing the acceptance growing and growing and growing in demand um, but we do see here it's march madness three weeks 136 teams and two college basketball championships while there is no shortage of talent and promise on the court it's often the pro uh, proven programs with the most experienced seasoned you know coaches and practice players that are the odds on favors the same is true for crypto there's a lot of hype and activity in the arena but at the end of the day it's the proven companies and their teams of cutting edge customers and partners with the experience industry savvy and technical resources that deliver the most trusted solutions and actually talking about this i want you guys to understand that when we are talking about you know investing in xrp xlm you know utility gems it's proven and clear cut and dry winners like xrp in my opinion will have you know clarity uh, we will see xrp being absolutely massively adopted in and uh, the markets that ripple is really focused on in terms of cross-border payments and stuff like that is going to astronomically increase the value of xrp if it is utilized properly throughout the ripple net you know network which i don't believe that it's not going to be i think that we're going to see xrp skyrocket in value and utility and use in general uh, so i'm very excited for that now we do see here 
you know, 10 years, 55 countries, and hundreds of financial institutions. That's Ripple's stat line, a rare crypto triple-double. And they are mentioning a few use cases or partners that are utilizing Ripple. We do see, you know, CM Commercial Bank, S uh, SCB, rely on Ripple to power instant, low-cost cross-border payments in Thailand. Uh, and this is, of course, you know, one-minute end-to-end processing time. It's 80,000 monthly transactions and 400 million in monthly person-to-person -person remittance settlements. Then, of course, Neom. You know, this again took eight weeks to have it up and running on Ripple and is saving 98% on domestic transfer rates for customers. That is a significant savings rate. And of course, don't forget people, the blockchain, you know, native financial services platform that helped bring Ripple's payments solution to the Middle East market for the first time, enabling a real life use case for improved treasury flows between USD and Euro and providing people, customers access to additional working capital to help streamline cash. This is here. This is now. These are use cases. These are, you know, live projects. And like I said, these are huge innovations, especially in terms of 98% savings. And of course, the next 10 years, you know, again, crypto for business. As we do look at, you know, crypto long term, we're going to see a lot of institutional demand, a lot of institutional growth, especially within, you know, a lot of these major, you know, companies that are already, you know, live and doing absolutely massive things like Ripple, right? And of course, the liquidity hub is the big point here, but we also see tokenization. Now, I actually want to talk to you guys about tokenization. So, as we do see a lot more, you know, adoption of on-demand liquidity, you know, the liquidity hub and stuff like that, I also do see a major growing point for, you know, tokenization. We actually see here uh, from Stevie Ripple, uh, we do see real estate and fintech. I see near instant mortgages in the future, tokenized property as a collateral, uh, perhaps. And we do see uh, Seville's ties up with Singapore payments, fintech property consultancy, Seville's Singapore has tied up with a Singap uh, Singapore fintech to offer digital payments for SMEs. Again, th these are small, medium enterprises. These are also the same individuals that are utilizing line of credit on Ripple. Um, but in terms of tokenization, we do see, you know, again, also from Seville's, right? They are seeing a total global real estate market of 326.5 trillion in 2020, a 5% increase on 2019 levels and a record high. As we are seeing more and more money flowing into the real estate market, um, we also see a major demand within the idea of tokenizing this area. I honestly see you know, tokenization of real estate, tokenization of almost everything very, very soon. And uh, the best part about this is there's actually already you know, tokenized you know, real estate um, strides going forward that are already kind of live right now for example um, i'm sure a lot of you probably know about property already the most valuable asset is you automated transactions from the leading real estate innovator um, of course they were the first to market i don't know if they have that up here they might actually have it down here um, so new real estate property nft now ready uh, again these are nfts that are already live in terms of you know real estate so this is tokenization of of course like i said real estate it's already here it's already happening and uh, honestly i think that this is so sick like i think that this is such a major innovation within this area like i'm very excited for this um especially when we are talking about a 300 you know trillion dollar market already i really do think that this could move you know very fast in terms of a massive adoption area and we do see this goes back one year tokenized real estate inches forward despite legal technical hurdles and we did see you know at this point in time you know you've got 280 trillion dollars of real estate assets and tokenized real estate is going to let all investors into that asset class uh, you know, we do see we want to offer these securities, these asset backed securities to people who traditionally haven't had access. You know, when we are talking about, you know, real estate being tokenized, it does allow for, you know, fractional ownership. I think that that's a very interesting thing. Um, but they also see, you know, when we are talking about something is better than nothing, we need to protect the simple person who is busy, busy to survive and wants their money to work for them. You know, this is, you know, real estate investing through tokenization. Um, and we even see, you know, again, up here, you know, moreover, he noted that there are there are 12.5 million accredited investor households in the U.S. who could benefit. More recent data suggests there are 13.6 million, even if tokenized real estate doesn't fully democratize the market. There's going to be a lot of benefits to this. I think that when we are talking about tokenization in terms of, you know, real estate, it's going to, like I said, add to fractional ownership. Um, it's going to, you know, give that, you know, dependency on one 
ownership in general like you're gonna have that authenticity which we already have overall with deeds and stuff but this is going to be such a bigger aspect uh in terms of like nfts and stuff it's going to be a major investment area and uh even you know ripple themselves sees a major growing demand in terms of new value trends within tokenization so we actually see down here let me go down to tokenized uh, so here we have tokenized establishes the digital representation of value on the blockchain uh, manage as well and then here we have it so you know they are really kind of focused on tokenization in general and really kind of seeing that you know for an example projects at 10 percent or um sorry the world economic forum for an example projects that 10 percent of the world gdp will be tokenized by 2027 i think that this could actually grow massively i think that this number is a little bit too conservative in my opinion and we do see nfts being mentioned um we see even the metaverse which by the way digital land is already you know for sale in the metaverse which is very significant very interesting as well and then uh down here let me go to um because i already read through this but here we have manage you know they are mentioned a few and of course there are so many token types being used in these ways including cryptocurrencies and private stable coins nfts and cbdc's and again tokenized real estate and commodities and more we are going to see a growing demand within crypto adoption. Um, honestly, we do see here 76% of financial institutions expect to use crypto in the next three years. When we are talking about this, how are they going to utilize it? Well, they're going to be accepting tokenized assets. They're going to be you know, moving in on tokenized assets. Even the stock exchange wanted to launch NFTs on the stock market. I think that that is a huge you know, point on, hey, we are almost at the tipping point of mass adoption and global adoption of these tokenized assets. But tokenization has become a major interest area. And I think that this is great because this is going to be trillions and trillions of dollars. In fact, even Red Swan. So for you guys that hold XRP, maybe also hold HBAR, we do see Red Swan by introducing tokenization to real estate. Red Swan CRE is increasing the financial inclusion of real estate investments. Now a broader base of investors can invest in high quality CRE assets. Now, like I said, when we we're talking about tokenization of real estate, there's already major use cases within this area. Proppy is one. Red Swan is also another one. Red Swan is actually built on Hedera. If you guys didn't know, uh, they are, you know, partnered with Hedera to really kind of utilize them for the Hedera token service. Um, this is very significant. Um, a lot of these projects, you know, specifically even Ripple, Hedera, things like that are doing very well within adoption areas and i'm very excited to say the least to see a lot of this really come to fruition um, i think that a lot of this is already live it's just not getting that mainstream adoption just yet i don't even think nfts i know for a long time everyone has been saying nfts have already seen mass adoption you know retail demand is already at all-time highs nfts are about to go into a bear market at a 52.2 billion dollar market cap this is nowhere near global adoption and mass adoption Neither is crypto. Honestly, if you are seeing crypto at a $2 trillion market cap and saying that this is mass adoption already, global adoption, where there's barely anyone actually holding crypto can, you know, compared to the global scale of individuals, like I think that it was like maybe 400 million individuals hold crypto. That is absolutely nothing. We are not even at the tipping point of mass adoption in terms of the numbers. But statistical wise, we are seeing a lot more interest within this area. And I'm very excited to see this unfold, specifically in tokenization of real estate and things like that. I really do think that everything will be tokenized eventually. So with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications on if you guys want more free content. If you guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and turn to free Discord down in the description below. As always, I hope that you all have a beautiful day or a beautiful night wherever you guys are in this beautiful world. This has been Nick. Peace out, guys.